Well, I first went to Cambodia for a medical mission trip. And it was in 2007. Um, there was a group from Japan going and they had invited me to come. I felt like God wanted me to go, so I went. And it was kind of an incredible trip. I just saw God do so much. Um, it was my first medical mission trip ever. Um, so I was a little nervous. I hadn't practiced medicine in about a year and a half at that time because mm. I'd quit my job to become a missionary in Japan. and. So when they told me there's going to be 500 patients that we see a day and five doctors total to see them, I was a little scared, especially because we only had six hours a day to see them, <laughs> um, which is not enough as an American doctor. And then I was a little sad too, because I was like, God, I quit my job and became a missionary to tell people about you, but if I'm gonna be a doctor and I have to see so many patients, I don't have time to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, but that's okay. I know I'm here to be a doctor. And my first patient um, was someone who had heartburn. And so I was like, oh, I can do this. <laughs> Because part of me was nervous. I was like, what if um, I see patients that have like all these typical third world diseases and I don't remember how to treat them properly anymore. Um, but I was like, okay, heartburn, I can do. <laughs> And then my second patient though, she was super sick. Um, she, um, I thought she had either TB that had spread to her bones or she had cancer, metastatic cancer. As I'm examining her, I'm just talking to God and I was like, God, I became a doctor to help people, not to see them die. And if this is what this two week mission trip is gonna be like, like this is only my second patient the first day, emotionally, I can't handle this. And, um, and as I was just talking to God, my translator interrupted me and she said, oh, what the patient is saying is that as soon as you touched her, all her pain disappeared and she feels like she's healed. And so we prayed some more and she just felt totally well and walked out the door. The next girl who came in, she was a seven year old girl and she had been born with a congenital problem so she couldn't see well out of one eye. And so I was so excited after the last patient I was like let's just pray for you <laughs> so we prayed and like before prayer she could only see shapes she couldn't see anything else um, but after prayer she could count my fingers and then she got hungry so I let her go um, and then the next day there was this girl who was 15 years old and she had become completely blind so you could go like this she couldn't see anything mm -hmm. she was going numb on her face and so I felt like she needed an MRI because there was probably something in the back of her brain that needed to be taken care of and it was my first time in Cambodia. I didn't even know if Cambodia had an MRI machine. She's in the middle of a village. I know she can't afford it even if they do and so I just said I'm sorry there's nothing we can do for you but out of my mouth after that came but Jesus can heal you. Can we pray for you? And so um, we prayed and first she could see my eyes then she could see me smiling then she could count fingers then she could see I was writing something and then I saw the long line of patients I was supposed to be seeing so I told a 12 and a 15 year old girl who were sitting with me you go pray for her and don't stop until she's totally healed I have to see more patients and then five minutes later there was this big ah, and they all came running out of the room she was healed saved walking out the door um, it was an incredible incredible trip like by the last day I wasn't asking patients anymore what's wrong with you I was like do you know Jesus Jesus <laughs> loves you he wants to heal you and then um, they would accept Jesus and I would just tell them to pray for themselves and um, they would just get healed and so every single patient except for one that day got saved and every single one except for one guy healed and it was just incredible um, and I loved it um, like one little boy he was 14 years old and he had a rock hard lymph node and difficulty swallowing and mm -hmm. I was like, oh, he might have thyroid cancer, but I don't want to tell him that. So I was like, can I pray for you? And so we prayed, and the first time it got really soft, the rock hard lymph node. The second time, I could barely find it. And the third time, it was like completely gone. We gave him something to eat and drink. He could swallow fine, he was totally fine. One lady came, and she was just so sour. <laughs> As I was talking to her, I was like, she's so sour. And God was just like, if you had as many problems as she does, you would be this sour too. And so I was like, oh. And I was like, okay, do you know Jesus? Jesus loves you, wants to heal you. And she's like, well, I'm only going to believe in Jesus if he heals me. And so my first thought was like, okay. Um, my second thought was like, what if it doesn't happen? <laughs> and then my third thought was like, that's my lack of faith. And so out loud, I said, okay. Um, so we prayed and, um, and then I asked her, are you better? And she said, um, no. And I was like, are you sure? I was like, not even a little bit. And she's like, okay, a little bit, I'm better in my left shoulder. So I took her hand, stuck it on there, and had her pray for herself. And 
Soon she had this big smile on her face. She was totally healed. Then she prayed for all her other problems. She walked out the door smiling so big and just totally healed and saved. Um, so it was a great day. Um, so that was our last day of official medical camps. And so I loved it just based on that. Mm. But um, when, for a long time, actually, even before I became a missionary, there was three groups of people that I wanted to reach out to because I felt like they really need God because they have nothing else. And those are orphans, uh, prisoners in third world countries, and um, prostitutes uh, or sex trafficking victims um, and I was like they have nothing um, and there's they need something and that something can't be just a person it has to be God and so I would worked with um, prisoners by then in third world countries I'd worked with the orphans but there's this one group that I hadn't worked with and I had tried to do it 10 years earlier but my dad had gotten so scared um, that I hadn't done it for his own, his peace of mind and so I always felt like I missed my chance. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was the very last day, and that day we were just supposed to see the volunteers who had been helping us and mm -hmm. stuff. And when I come down for breakfast, somebody was like, we need two doctors to go to the brothels of Cambodia. I was like, me, me, me. <laughs> and so as we're walking there, I'm all excited about what's going to happen. And the lady taking us there was like, um, well, you can't talk about Jesus. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> oh, I wish you told me before, but okay. I still want to go. And then she was also telling us that about 90% uh, of those girls had been sold into prostitution by their own families to pay off like medical debts and other things. And I just remember thinking like in the Philippines and in India, a lot of the girls, they um, go into prostitution because um, like they're tricked into it. Uh, people come to the villages and say, we've got jobs for your daughters. And then um, they're in the city and they're in a brothel. Uh, but there's always that hope, you know, like if I could only get out, mm. I would be able to go back to my family and have a life. But I was just thinking, what kind of hope do you have when your own family did this to you? Like, I couldn't even imagine what that would feel like. Right. And so um, as we went to the first girl, um, of course, we're treating them all for STDs because um, of what they're doing. and. Um, and so, um, yeah, so I'm giving them their STD medications and um, I it just said, can I pray with you? Um, and, and then I would just give them a hug and pray with them. And some of them would say yes to the prayer, some would say no, but I'd hug everyone. And they just look at me with these eyes like, how can you love me so much? And I remember thinking, but what am I doing for you? Like, I'm giving you medicine because of what you're forced to do every day, but you're gonna get the same disease tomorrow, you know? Like, I wish I could take you out of here, but I can't. And one of the girls, um, she said to me, I have HIV, I haven't told anyone. And all I could do was give her a hug and pray for her. Um, and so, as I was walking out, and like all those girls would just like stare at me till they couldn't see me anymore as I walked out of their houses. Um, and I just remember thinking, I was like, God, I know you want me in Japan right now, but someday please bring me back to Cambodia to help these women. And so uh, a few years later, <laughs> uh, I felt like God was telling me to leave Japan and go to Cambodia. And so that's why I moved to Cambodia. <laughs>